Imagine we're in heaven. That's easy if you try. Imagine that we can create the world that we believe in. I want to tell you about a young boy who lived in the 1200s. He lived in a time when the church of his day had a lot of corruption. Grabbing land, grabbing money, a lot of corruption within the church organization. I know you can't imagine there being corruption in church organizations. But <laughs> in the 1200s, things were in a pretty sad state. And it was about power, and it was about money, and it was about greed. And there was this young boy by the name of Francesco. And Francesco, you know, liked to party with his friends, and he was known as a partier. He partied with his friends, he liked to go out. So he was considered a, par a party guy. And like many young men, he thought it was good for him to go out and, you know, join the military, and he became a soldier which was a dismal, dismal disappointment in his life. He was not cut out to be a soldier at all. He ended up in jail for a while. He ended up very, very sick. And in his time of recovery, things began to shift and change in Francesco's life. As in our lives, when things get upended and turned around. One day, Francesco was sitting in a small, small chapel. And there was this cross that was at the front of the chapel. It's called the Cross of San Damiano. And as he was meditating and as he was praying and looking at the cross, Jesus came alive on the cross and began to speak to Francesco. And Jesus said to Francesco, rebuild my church. Now, a lot of the chapels were in disarray and in ruins. A lot of the small chapels were torn apart. And so... He took it on a literal value at first that it was his to repair the chapel and to repair other chapels. And other people began joining him to repair the chapels. But what really began to happen is that he began to really want to follow the life, the teachings, the example of Jesus. That was his real passion. That was his real interest. What would it be like? This, this is the question you might ask yourself. What would it be like if we were to live the way Jesus lived? Francesco took that very, very seriously. So seriously that one day, now his father was a merchant well-to-do merchant. And as a merchant, he was used to making money. He was used to making a profit. And that was much of what his life was about. He wasn't a, a bad man. He wasn't a bad person. But he was a businessman. And he kept trying to teach Francesco how to be a good businessman. But that did not fit Francesco. And one day, Francesco showed up in the city square. Imagine. Well, maybe you could imagine this in Waikiki. <laughs> but <laughs> let's imagine the state capitol. Francesco went to the, sit, the city courtyard completely naked. 
I chose not to do that today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Francesco was carrying his clothing. The father was so irate and he brought out the bishop and he said, I want to disinherit my son. I don't want him to any longer be my son. I want nothing to do with him. I don't want him to have inheritance. Straighten him out. And the bishop, being a bishop in the 1200s, not wanting to see a decrease in the offerings, began to try to plead with Francesco. Francesco took his clothes, handed it to his father, and said, Here, Father, here is what you have given me. It is no longer mine. And he started a whole new life. He began to wear very simple clothes, wrapped a rope around the center has three knots standing for poverty, chastity, or, you know, being pure, and obedience. And others began following. You might wonder why. Why would others start following him? Well, because there was something about his message. There was something about his life that was so sincere so real that it attracted others who were spiritual seekers. It attracted those who really wanted to follow God and not just try to make more money. If you haven't figured out by now, Francesco is St. Francis. Since I was a young teenager, I began studying about St. Francis. I was drawn to him much of my life. And in fact, in the Catholic Church, my confirmation name is Francis, named after St. Francis. St. Francis is the patron saint of animals. He's also the patron saint of ecology. That is, of all things working together. Now, my topic today is listening to nature, and I want to talk about the different natures that we are listening to, I hope. First, I hope you really listen to all the nature around you. St. Francis saw every living thing as brother and sister. Brother wolf. There was a wolf in Gabio that was terrorizing people and eating animals and doing all kinds of things. And St. Francis went out to talk to Brother Wolf and straighten him out. There would be Sister Moon and Brother Sun. Even Brother Death. He saw everything as interconnected. Everything as brother and sister. All animals, all living things, all people as being one. This is in the 1200s. He was teaching and practicing oneness. Oneness of all life. Oneness of all living things. In the 1200s. Hundreds of years later, we're still trying to get it. We still buy in to the illusion, the error of separation. That what happens to you doesn't affect me. That I'll just make my way and make money and do what I can to get ahead no matter what it does to other people. Many people have that attitude. It's very, very sad. So... St. Francis was very connected to nature, and that's the first thing I want us to be listening to, is nature. 
We moved to Mililani. Our, uh, uh, our first night there was Wednesday, but all month we've been moving. It's been quite, quite the ordeal. Has it been a while since you've moved? Yeah, I want to thank all those who've helped support in whatever way you have helped to support. It has been quite the process. And so, got to Mililani, and we live in the middle of the forest. I mean, there, there's like woods all around us. And I was taking a walk, and just I was just in awe, looking at all the trees and smelling the, the rainforest has a certain scent. And I could smell flowers that smelled like jasmine. And you could hear all these wonderful birds. And I recognized I need to slow down and listen to nature. Do you ever slow down? Do you? Good. Your minister sometimes has a challenge slowing down because there's so many things to get done and I'm often rushing here and there and trying to get so many things done. But, it's, but that makes it all the more important to slow down and really listen to nature all around me. We had that reading from Charles Fillmore about the animals. Charles Fillmore was an animal rights activist, the founder of the co-founders of our movement were animal rights activists. They did not believe in eating animals. They saw all animals as being living souls that we are connected with, and they didn't want to take into their bodies the terror, the fear that goes into an animal when they are being killed. I won't go into all the descriptions. A few of you have heard this, I think, in Deeper Dive. But, you know, I used to be a fisherman. I would love to sit by the water and just relax and fish. I'd sit in Wichita, Kansas, by the Ar Arkansas River. No, in Wichita, you do not say Arkansas River. That is how we know in Wichita whether you're from Wichita or not. It's the Arkansas River. And so we sit there, and I was sitting there, and it'd just be so calm. And I used to live right by the river, and I'd fish at night. I caught this big catfish. Now, I didn't, uh, pardon, pardon this description, okay, for some of you who may be sensitive to the description. Um, but a lot of fishermen will knock the catfish out after they've caught it. Well, I was just going to go ahead and sever the head without knocking it out. I had a butcher knife in my hand. And I could swear that the catfish was looking right at me. <laughs> the, this eye was right at me. And... It looked terrorized. And I thought, am I anthropomorphizing this? I mean, it looks like a look of terror. Really? A catfish? So I brought the butcher knife. I wasn't even cutting yet. Just brought it to the, what you might say, the neck. And while it's looking at me, it went, ee! <laughs> and I backed away. I thought, what? What is going on here? Again, I lowered the knife to the catfish and went, eee! Look of terror. And I actually said out loud, do you feel pain? Do you know what's about to happen to you? Are you a sentient being? I had kind of a, a crisis of faith going on at that moment. You 
you know, I was resolved to go ahead and prepare the catfish and eat it, which I did. And the entire time I was eating it, I felt so much regret. And I thought, I can never do this again. And I realized that I can't just ask someone else to do it for me and package it and make it look all anesthetic in a grocery store either. Hmm. I don't know where you're at in your journey with all this. What I want to illustrate is that we are connected with all people and all living things. The people you see sleeping on the sidewalk, the people that you're driving past on the highway, the people you are doing business with, the people who help take care of you in the hospital, Whoever you run into, and all living things, they are all made in the image of God. They are all the presence of God. If we do not get that, we do not get oneness. Unity is built on the premise of oneness, not separation. Not violence. Probably our most important principle. So listen to nature. Listen to what nature has to teach us. Today we're going to have the blessing of the animals at 1130. I always love having the animal blessing. I believe Catherine Kane is going to assist me with that. It's such a sweet time to bless these animal friends who've entered into our lives and who are so loving and give so much to us. You know, I, I used to have an Australian shepherd named Humbug. And I would tell Humbug anything that was on my heart. Humbug could read my mood and would immediately correspond to my mood. If I was sad, Humbug would be very quiet and just sit silently beside me. Humbug was my spiritual director. Humbug was such a good listener and never shared with anybody else what I shared. I still honor Humbug. And I honor your animal friends or those animal friends that have passed. So we bless all of nature. We bless all this world that we live in. We all subsist from Mother Earth. We are taught that in Genesis that we are to be stewards of this earth. We need to take care of it. So listen to nature. Listen to your nature. Do you listen to your higher nature? Do you listen to the Christ nature? The nature that sees the highest and best in others. The nature that sees the highest and best in what this world can be. That John Lennon song about imagine. Imagine a world that works for everybody. Imagine a world where we're all working together as brother and sister. You may say, how can I do that? Well, just like St. Francis, if you follow in integrity what you believe in your highest nature and listen to your higher nature, other people will follow. Other people will be touched by your integrity, by your witness. We have much more influence and power than we've ever imagined. St. Francis sought to make himself nothing. And in doing so, revolutionized the church of the 1200s. And his impact still lives to this day. He's probably the best known saint in all the world. 
just because he lived in integrity with what he really believed, with his higher nature. So listen to nature. Listen to your higher nature. Listen to the nature of God. That presence of God that is love, that presence of God that is peace, that presence of God that is connection. And listen to the connection that we all have with one another. Again, this is part of the purpose of spirit groups, is to connect with each other. We're not just individuals floating around here. We are built for relationship. We are built to connect with one another. Spirit groups is one of the ways that we do that. Small groups, other ways that we connect. I want to tell you, in the early 90s, I, I felt broken. I had left a ministry, a lot of things had happened. My marriage was circling the drain. There were a lot of problems at home. I had lost my home, my job, the church that I thought I was giving my life for. My life felt so broken. I was invited to go to a church called Unity. I was working as a psychiatric chaplain and a psychotherapist that I was working with in psychiatry, in the psychiatric department said, there's a church that I think you'd really like. It's called Unity. And I thought, ooh, what's that? You know, I mean, even with all the deconstruction going on in my life, there is still this kind of fundamentalist firewall. And I went. It was at Unity of Wichita. I immediately felt loved accepted for who I was. Some of the first people I met are here today. Bob and Vicki, would you stand? These were a couple of the first people I met. And I thought, what kind of church is this? They love me just as I am. They love me even though I feel broken, they don't see me as broken. They see the highest and best in me. They see the Christ in me. Yeah, I could use one of these. Thank you. I could see God in that connection. I could hear the, the presence of God in that acceptance, in that love, in that support. St. Francis was about all these things, listening to nature, listening to one's higher nature, listening to the real nature of God, listening to the connection that we have with one another and because of that wanting to serve. And that's what drew people, they wanted to serve. I can remember so many times, you know, talking with Bob and sometimes, I, Bob has this gift. I, I'd be standing somewhere and suddenly I'd feel these hands massaging the exact spot that I needed. There's such a connection. And that's what we have here. It's a beloved community. 
whether you are online, you are part of this beloved community, or whether you are here in person, we are building this beloved community, listening to one another, supporting each other, helping to build this world into a place that works for everybody. There's a story of Jesus that's in the Gospels. Maybe many of you have heard it, where Jesus came to the temple and they were selling animals for sacrifice. They were, you know, it was a big marketplace. And Jesus turned over all the tables and turned over the money changers tables. He said, this place is to be a place of prayer, but you've made it into a den of thieves. I believe he was not only advocating for the animals, signaling the stopping of sacrifice, but I believe he was also symbolizing that, hey, we got too much noise going on in our temple. We got too much cacophony going on in our inner sanctuary, our inner temple. And it's time to really focus on God. It's time to listen to nature, take time for silence, some time for quiet. Do you? Do you have daily times of quiet? Some people get real nervous with quiet. You know, some people are like, somebody say something, turn on the radio, turn on a TV. Do you ever have time just for quiet? Great, just to listen. Listen to nature, listen to your higher nature, listen to the nature of God and listen to the connection we have with one another. That is how we really affirm life. That is how we show others what it is to really live. And if you brought your animal friend or you can bring a picture, you can bring a picture on your phone or wherever, We'll have a blessing out here. And each animal that is blessed, we have a St. Francis medallion to go with your, your animal friend. God bless you. And thank you for being here today. Thank you. I invite you to take a deep breath as we center into this moment. God, we know that you are here. You are here with us. And let us go into the silence as we connect with that nature of God, our true nature, with the nature of all those and all living things around us.
God, we give thanks for the charge that we have been given. The charge to bring your will to earth as it is in heaven. And so it is. Amen.